Boju Anin, Tana Sketchings in Dijinakaz, Dakota Plains First Nation in Dunji, Winnipeg Noongum in Dijida. Miigwech. Hello, how are you? Tana Sketchings is my name. I am from Dakota Plains First Nation and I live in Winnipeg. I feel like I have been called to task to bring awareness to numerous topics that affect my family and other Indigenous families out there. I want to clarify that I do not speak for all Indigenous people, but rather today I am here to share with you my life as an Indigenous person in hopes that you will listen to these stories and that you will become an ally. That you can be out there with us spreading truths and promoting healing. So today I want to share with you stories from my life and my family's life. I lived very briefly in Dakota Plains First Nation when I was around five years old. Growing up, I mostly lived in the town of Portersville Prairie, which is pretty close to my reserve. We lived in the north end of the city until I was about 16 years old. And I come from a family of two older brothers and two younger sisters. And one of our sisters has since passed on. Growing up, uh, my parents struggled with alcoholism. I'm thankful today that that is no longer a struggle for them. They live sober and they follow God. I am proud of them for finding that path as my parents endured some pretty hard lives and went through some big traumas uh, that some people probably wouldn't believe. But later in life, it was uh, easy to see why they were struggling back then. Growing up, we had a loving family for sure, and most of the time, things were good. Uh, I was encouraged and loved, and I thought my life was pretty normal because I didn't really know what it was supposed to be like. <clears throat> I grew up in a neighborhood with other kids who had families just like mine. It wasn't until I was in around grade three that I realized I was different. That is the age when I started to be treated differently. My friends would invite me to their birthday parties, and most times the first invite would be the only invite that came. Many times after the first birthday party invite, my friends were told that they weren't allowed to be my friend anymore because their parents had told them so. And growing up, that was just the way it was. I tried my best to overcome those obstacles. When I was 18 years old, I met Chris, and here we are today, 19 years later, with three beautiful daughters. And with that, I have taught Chris a few things on what growing up Indigenous means. And with teaching Chris these things, I have also have to teach our children these things. I remember when I had to sit with Carmen when she was eight years old, I had to explain what this was going to mean for her, how Carmen would have to be more diligent of her surroundings, things she would say, who she was with, and what could become of it, because the world hadn't changed much since I was her age. That was a very difficult discussion to have with her, and it broke my heart. And just as we discussed, things started happening with her. When her daughter Carmen was eight years old, we started to see the friend shift she was having and how things were changing for her. Most of the parents of her friends were very welcoming, but not everyone else was. Later on this year, I'm gonna have to have that same conversation with Peyton, and a few years from then, I will have that same talk with London. As a mother of three Indigenous daughters, I need to be diligent. And as they become young women, as Carmen is now, comes further discussion that she could be targeted as an Indigenous woman. Our family is aware of missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and Two-Spirit. We have walked the annual march in Winnipeg wearing the names of the missing and murdered. It is heartbreaking. And honestly, this topic could have its own service, but I encourage you to look into it. 